to Garth Hamilton, I mean, it's easy now to, you know, slam the government. Everyone's going to be cross at the government, uh, I guess. But what could it or should it be doing that it isn't doing already? One thing it could start doing is listening. I mean, Jim Chalmers has shown he's got an incredible set of tin ears when it comes to the economy. People weren't interested in the voice. There were core issues affecting Australian households. And uh, look, Michael's raised the issue of unemployment. The government could start working on productivity. We've seen that slump 6% over the last 12 months, an incredible decline. It's having a huge impact on our economy. And sadly, we're seeing these figures today coming through about inflation. There's worse to come. You know, the IR legislation this government has put forward uh, will absolutely have a downward impact uh, on productivity. It will have an inflationary impact on the economy as well. And we haven't even seen uh, the full impact of the price caps that they put on the gas industry. That will drive prices up in the long run. So there is worse to come from this government. They need to start focusing on these core issues of the economy instead of, as Jim tried to do, reinvent it with his 6,000-word essay. Now, I said, gentlemen, before the break, I've come across the most amazing example of ABC bias. Maybe it's an accident. I do not know. But uh, Sabra Lane on uh, the AM this morning, ABC AM, uh, was discussing the fact that Hamas had uh, released two of the Jewish hostages had taken, more than 200. Here she is saying, well, look, this, these, these women were saying they were treated beautifully. Here, here we go. One of the two Israeli hostages freed yesterday has been telling her story to the world. 85-year-old Yochevev Lipchez says she was taken to a spider web of underground tunnels, that it was terrifying, but she was treated well in captivity. And then they crossed the correspondent who said, uh, well, uh, Ms Lipschitz uh, de described the treatment as good, saying her captors made sure the conditions were sanitary. They're all very friendly to the people who've been captured and they took care of all their needs. What they never reported was that this poor woman said before they got to the cave, she'd been beaten with sticks. And by the way, her hus husband is still there. I mean, what is going on, Michael? Look, you're seeing across um, across the left and the left-orientated uh, media an, an, an incredible bias against uh, Israel, and it's just uh, transparent. It's not just in this country, by the way. The publicly funded media in the UK is uh, doing exactly the same. The BBC's biased. I've been watching some of their stuff. It's just appalling the way oh. they uh, treat, um, you know, Israeli spokespeople as criminals uh, as opposed to the real criminals, Hamas. So there's a real problem, but it reflects the sort of institutional um, biases that we've seen over decades um, in our main institutions. They hate Israel. There's anti-Semitism all over the place. They look for anything to, to humanise Hamas, a terrorist, an illegal terrorist group, and anything to criticise Israel. And we saw the fiasco over the hospital and the um, fiasco over the, the um, you know, the blocking of the passage out of um, the Gaza Strip. I mean, it's disgraceful, uh, and it's happening across the board. Now, like I said, this woman had been beaten with sticks and a, de a, a fact somehow missed in this ABC report. Here is their correspondent saying, in fact, how well this woman was treated. Here she is. She said doctors came every couple of days and she described the treatment by Hamas as good, saying that her captors made sure the conditions were sanitary and that they were very friendly to the people who had been captured and that they took care of all of their needs. An extraordinary omission. But, Garth, you know, the anti-Jewish hatred, I'm not saying that was motivated by hatred, could just be stupid reporting. Uh, now, there is sick. I mean, I'll give you another example. This poster at Hope Street Community Radio in Collingwood, Melbourne. Free Palestine from the colonising dumb white dogs. Abolish Israel. An Aboriginal uh, art collective, the Mob Arts Collective, organised this banner-making event. Have you ever seen anything in your life like this outright racism in our streets? I hoped I never would, Andrew. It's absolutely terrible. Let, let's not let ABC off the hook too quickly because the point you've raised tonight is the second transgression after the, uh, the reporter pushing back on the you know, beheading of babies report coming out. Uh, so, you know, ABC have got form here. They're, they're, they're well, uh, you know, put themselves out as to where they want to be reporting this from. They want to be as pro-Hamas as possible. But to see this sort of division in our streets, it's, it's important to remember, Andrew, this is the stuff that we were trying to fight against in The Voice. These are the same elements that are trying to divide Australia on issues of race, 
on, on religion, on the unimportant things that divide us and not focus on the things that, that bring us together. And quite frankly, in a time of war, which is what we're seeing in the Middle East, we need to be together. We need to be focused and standing with our allies, shoulder to shoulder, with complete clarity. We're with you, Israel, 100%. And Hamas, this war that has started, is a war that you have wanted, that you brought about, that when you went into Israel and, and committed these terrible, terrible crimes, this is the outcome you were seeking. And we need to remind people that's why we're here. That's why we're in the oh, situation we're in. That is, that is a mm. very important point, Garth, because Hamas to this day is still firing rockets into Israel. So there you go. Michael Costa, Garth Hamilton, thank you both for your time.